Well, hello. It is very bright. It is not cold, but not hot. I am in the pickup, like waiting for my kids to get out of school. And I thought it was a good time to pick up the phone and do a little impromptu commentary on new planner season. Now, I will also have a podcast that's already recorded coming out in the next couple of weeks to give you a, like a longer form thing to listen to when it comes to trying to resist spending all the money and buying all the things. But I did want to pop on here as well because it's new planner season and there's a hell of a lot of stuff out. And I've already been seeing people commenting about how they don't know what to buy. They're going to buy all the things. They don't want to buy all the things, but they feel like they have to buy all the things. And here's here's kind of the, the rub of the situation. Whenever there's new releases, you want it, right? New stuff comes out and you want it. If it is anywhere in your aesthetic, change angles briefly because the sun was right in my face. But like you, anything you could possibly fit into your lifestyle, right? You might want or you may convince yourself you need it or you want it. Well, it's worse at this time of year in the like October, November area of the year because at this point, unless you are somebody who uses an academic planner, this is when you're starting to think about what you're going to want for next year and all the releases for next year are coming out and you not only are trying to figure out what you might want to use, but if you see something you might like and you were like, well, I really want a particular style or a particular cover, then you worry it's going to sell out. I know with the power sheets, that's already happening. Like they've already sold out of one of their covers. So if you were looking into the power sheets and you aren't sure if you're going to use them or not, but the cover you want is close to selling out, you might wind up buying it just because you might use it. I'm here to tell you, to remind you, A, no matter how awesome a cover of something is, you can always cover it up with something else if you can't get the one you want. And B, if you don't know for sure if you're going to use something, then don't let the possibility that the cover might sell out force you into buying it. Because if you're not going to use it, it's a waste of money. And if you don't know if you're going to use it or not, then you're going to guilt yourself one way or the other once you've spent the money on it. So don't let scarcity of products horrify you into buying something unless you really, really know you're going to use it and you really, really have a specific thing, specific style, whatever that you want. And if that's the case, you know what you're going to use. So yeah, go ahead and get it for next year. But here's the other thing. If you decide you know what you're going to use and you buy it and you feel good about it and then something else comes out and you're like, oh, well, maybe I want to use that instead. That's another trap you need to avoid because spending the money on the thing that you've decided you use and then something new and shiny comes out is if, if it starts to distract you or make you decide you're going to want to use it, then you need to go back to the new thing you haven't used yet and look at it and admire it and run your hands over and I don't know what else do some fucking planner molestation or whatever but like you want to remind yourself that you already have this new thing that you're really excited about and you just aren't using it yet because it's not time that's where the companies get you it's because there is an amount of time between when they release the product and when the product's going to go into use and that's the time where they can like sneak on in there with new things and get you to question what you were actually going to use in the first place. I'm not dogging on companies for marketing and everybody's got to make money, whatever, but just be aware that it's happening and be aware that, you know, when people are talking about the things they might use or the things they're going to use, if they're an affiliate of the program and you buy it with their link, then they profit from that. And I'm an affiliate for power sheets. I'm affiliate for other things. I also profit from it. And that doesn't mean that the person who's giving you information is being disingenuous, but at the same time, if somebody gets something for free or they're profiting off of the sale of it, remind yourself of that because at the very least what it might do is is give you some perspective on why they are considering using the things now 
the flip side of that is that often if you're an affiliate for something, it's because you actually use it and love it. Like that's how I am with the power sheets. I may not use them next year, but I've used them for several years now and I've really loved them. And so when I talk about them, it's because I love them, but I also am an affiliate. And so if you buy using my link, I make money. And I am a proponent of using affiliate links because if somebody recommended something to you, it doesn't cost you any extra and it helps support the stuff that they make that you enjoy. However, it's not that I don't want you to trust affiliates because like I said, I am one and that would be me undermining myself. But at the same time, remember that just because somebody loves a product and is going to use it does not mean that you will love it and use it even if you admire that person, even if you really trust their opinion. It can be very difficult when people are singing the praises of products to resist it. Like if a company is singing the praises of its products, it's a little easier to resist because it's a company, right? You, we're used to companies advertising to us. We're used to, you know, commercials during the Super Bowl. We're used to that kind of shit. But even now, even with all of the cynicism around social media and content creators, the parasocial relationships that we have with people on the internet make it so that we trust people's opinions more than we trust advertising, even though those opinions could also, in many cases, be taken as advertising because they are affiliates or because they were sent product for free or because they were sponsored. This is my like yearly reminder to you to remember to see all of these reviews and all of these hauls and everything else with a critical lens to remind yourself of the context of everything that you're looking at so that you could watch, say, one of my reviews of something and know that I'm giving you my opinion on something. But if I'm an affiliate of it and you decide to buy it, then I will get a profit from it. But to take the information from my video and do with it what you will, but take my opinions, like take my info and do with it what you will. Take my opinions of things with a grain of salt, just as you would take anyone else's, because it, it just will help you to parse through the information that you're getting in a more useful way than in a way that it is, is designed to get you to part ways with your money. You know, every year during this time of year, it can be very easy to go overboard, both because you have to spend money for other people because this is the season where there's holidays where you give gifts, but then also because you're gearing up for the next year and you want it to be your best year, like especially after the last couple of years of the pandemic, like you want the next year to be better. And so you're looking for the better thing to bring you into that year or the better things, the better pen, the better accessories, the better whatever. Nothing is going, no item is going to make your year better. How you use things might help you make your year better, but the actual product is not going to change your, your world completely. It might help you, it might assist you, but you are not making a life or death decision when you're buying a planner. And I know people are like, yeah, it does, Cindy, like we know this, but often we assign so much meaning to some of these choices and we assign so much value that it makes sense to blow a bunch of money on shit we're not going to use because of the perceived value of it. And I just, I want to remind you that when you're perceiving the value of something, planners or otherwise, to really ask yourself, where is that value coming from? And is it really that valuable or is it just something that a bunch of people on the internet have sort of ascribed to a product because it's pretty and it's new? This was meant to just be a quick little ramble. As a reminder, like I said, there's going to be a podcast coming out. You can find my podcast linked in the description below for a bit more structured of a PSA for new planner season. But that's not coming out till the first weekend of November, I don't think. And so I wanted to make sure to um, to offer a little bit of support because I know that there's stuff coming out now and I've already seen it getting to people. You know I'm here for you. You know that I will review shit and give you my honest opinion of things and so on and so forth to help you spend money wisely. I hope you know that my goal with all these videos, especially these ones more about consumerism, is to make sure that I'm not telling you to live a minimalistic lifestyle. I don't live a minimalistic lifestyle. But at the same time, being conscious of what we're spending and how we're spending 
is the best way to make sure that the ch that we don't have as many regrets regrets when it comes to how we've spent money and the things that we've brought into our life i would love to hear from you in the comments below something you have successfully resisted buying make sure to subscribe thanks for watching and until next time my friends peace